Hi, my name is Matthew Moniz, and this is my review of the HP Elite X2 1012 2-in-1 laptop. This model is aimed at business professionals looking for a computer that's light, portable, and stylish. The Elite X2 features the latest Skylake Core M processors, has pen input, and comes with a detachable keyboard. So here's my review. At first glance, you can't help but notice the design similarities to the Surface Pro 4. It's about the same size and weight. The difference is that the Elite X2 is made out of aviation grade aluminum. The design behind the Elite X2 was inspired by furniture created by Ludwig Mies van der Rohe and Lily Reich. The result is a simple and clean professional looking notebook. The hinge on the back has up to 150 degrees of tilt and HP has designed it to be opened up 8 times a day, 7 days a week for up to 5 years. This meets the ROI for a product in a commercial environment. I've been using the Elite X2 for over a month now and the hinge is just as sturdy as the day I got it. In terms of ports, on the right side you have one USB Type-C that also acts as a charging port, a micro SD card slot, one USB 3.0 port and an audio jack. On the left you have the SIM card tray if you buy the model that supports LTE connectivity, a volume rocker, a power button and on the back a fingerprint scanner. The entire lineup uses Intel's 6th generation Core M processors. You can buy it with an M3 or at its fastest a Core M7. The model I have here sits in the middle with a dual core M5 processor clocked at 1.1 GHz, 8GB of RAM and a 256GB SSD. The screen size is 12.3 inches, has a resolution of 1920 by 1280 supports touch and pen input. This model retails for $1350 US and includes the HP Active Pen and Travel Keyboard. Now the Elite X2 has a good display, it's sharp, clear, colors are well represented and it also has good viewing angles, however I did find the screen to be a little dark. I found I had to keep adjusting the brightness to about 85-100% to for the best viewing experience. The panel covering the display is made out of Gorilla Glass 4, so expect some minor glare, but it's durable against surface scratches. Above that display rests a 2 megapixel camera capable of recording 1080p video. It doesn't support the Windows Hello facial recognition feature but adequate enough for video conferencing. Now if you need a better camera, you can use the 5 megapixel camera on the back. Just like the front, it supports 1080p, but it also has a flash in case you need the extra light. I did find the camera to have a hard time focusing on objects, but the picture quality itself is good enough to snap or scan documents. Speaking of documents, you can sign them on your screen using the included HP Active Pen. It uses Wacom technology as 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity, which is double of the Surface Pro 4. The pen also includes quick shortcut buttons, the top one launches Microsoft OneNote, and the bottom two buttons are used to erase and select an area on the screen. Overall, it's a really good pen and it's accurate and pressure sensitive. Now, I'm not an artist, but I know Wacom is the go-to technology, so I believe most artists will be happy. However, one thing I'm not happy with is that there's no place to put the pen when you're not using it. There's no magnets on the side, and the only option is to clip it to the bottom of the travel keyboard, which is not too secure in my opinion. Next up is the keyboard. The one that comes with the Elite X2 is the travel keyboard, but there's also an advanced keyboard that has a smart card reader and NFC built into it. Now I'm going to focus on the travel keyboard since this is the one that came inside the box. It's thin and made out of all metal and looks really good. The keys are responsive and tactile and feel much better than the keys on the Surface Pro type cover. I'm surprised how good this keyboard is for a detachable. In fact, if this was my laptop keyboard, I'd be 100% happy. The keys have a travel distance of 1.5 millimeters, which is the lowest I'd like to go for travel distance and it offers two levels of backlighting. Below the keyboard lies the glass touchpad. It's spacious and has enough room to move your fingers around. It's a pretty good touchpad, but it's not the best. I found the touchpad on the Surface Pro type cover to be more accurate. I often found myself having to drag my finger more than once to move the cursor at times. I feel the issue is probably more software related than hardware, so I'm sure it can be fixed in a future update. Alright, so the Elite X2 comes with two Bang & Olufsen speakers, a reputable company that offers superb sound. Well, I was quite disappointed with the speakers. The highs were decent, the mids were washed out, and there's no bass. In fact, the mono speaker on my iPhone got louder and had better sound overall. First and foremost, this is not a gaming laptop. This is meant to get work done. If you're someone who uses Microsoft Office, Google Docs, then the Elite X2 is perfect. Video creators, heavy Photoshop users, and anyone that uses AutoCAD, 
might want to consider a more powerful computer. With that being said, having multiple Chrome tabs open, working in Excel, and even watching full HD video is not a problem for this laptop. In fact, even if you do decide to use Photoshop, it will run fine with light use. Hard drive speeds were okay, it's a SanDisk X300 which is an M2 SATA drive, read speeds averaged around 385 megabytes per second, and write speeds were around 300. The results were expected for this type of drive, but if you want faster read and write speeds, then there's an Elite X2 that uses an MVME SSD. Now I'm not going to dig too deep into the software, but it is running Windows 10 Pro, but I do want to talk about commercial features. For IT, considering the Elite X2 for mass deployment, it does contain all the HP security features such as HP BIOS protection, secure erase, and power on authentication. The Elite X2 uses no glue which means upgrading and replacing the hardware is done by using two suction cups to remove the glass. Once removed, you can upgrade the hard drive, replace the RAM, or even the glass itself. And finally, the battery inside is 40 watt hours and HP claims that it can last up to 10 hours of use before needing a charge. I was averaging about 7 hours, but that's because I had the brightness set to 85-100%, to 100%, which I found to be the best viewing experience. I imagine if you turn it down to 50% or less, you can hit that 10 hour mark. Alright, so here's the things I liked about the Elite X2. I love how light and portable it is. I found myself using it over my Dell XPS 15 to write scripts, sit on the couch, or even browse the internet. The pen is accurate, the travel keyboard is solid, and it has just enough ports to work with my peripherals. Here's the things I don't like. The speakers are really poor. The sound is much too low for a notebook. The trackpad is good, but the accuracy could be better. And finally, I wish there was a place to put the pen, because knowing me, I'm definitely going to lose it. Now this model runs for 1350 US, includes both the pen and keyboard. I think if you're a consumer there's better options for the price range, but if you're buying this to deploy across the enterprise for upper management, the Elite X2 is a solid choice. It provides great security features and it's easily serviceable by IT. So I want what you guys think of the Elite X2, at least from a business perspective. If you're a business professional, is this something you would consider? Let me know in the comments down below. I want to thank everyone out there for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.